Hello and welcome back to this video series about multivariable calculus. Now, in today's part 10, we will talk about so-called directional derivatives. Indeed, they will generalize the concept of partial derivatives we already know. However, before we discuss the details there, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. So you know, all these videos here are only possible because of your support. Okay, now in this video, as often, we will look at a function f from rn into r. In other words, the function depends on n variables. And there you know from former videos that for such a function we have different possible derivatives if they exist. The first thing we have to find in part 4 were the partial derivatives denoted by df dxi. And the point where we consider the partial derivative was denoted by x tilde. And then after that in part 5 we defined the more powerful derivative, the total derivative. And there you now know it can be represented by the Jacobian matrix or by the gradient. Okay, then regarding this order here, we can say that the directional derivative lies in between these two notions here. Indeed, in the end you should see that the partial derivatives are just special cases for directional derivatives. Therefore, maybe the partial derivatives are a good starting point here to explain what directional derivatives should be. And as often, we can present a good visualization if we consider the two-dimensional case. So the domain of the function is given by the plane. And for example, we know the function could be represented by contour lines. Indeed, this picture helps again explaining what the partial derivatives do. So for example, let's fix a point x tilde here where we want to calculate the partial derivatives. More precisely, there we know if we want to calculate the partial derivative with respect to x2, we just consider the function here defined on a line. In other words, now we have a one-dimensional function where we can just calculate the usual normal derivative. More concretely, we know the formula looks like this. We fix the point x tilde and then we just change with h the second component. So you should see, this is a derivative for f with a fixed direction namely the x2 direction. So it makes sense to say that this is a directional derivative. Moreover, we also know that we have the other one, the partial derivative with respect to x1. Okay, also for this one we know the definition, but now the question should be, can we also look at other directions here in the plane? For example, is it possible to define a derivative with respect to this direction here? Of course, this shouldn't be a problem, because also this line here gives us a one-dimensional function again, where we can just calculate the ordinary derivative. However, there we need to think a little bit how this definition should look like. In particular, we want to have a closed formula for a general function f defined on Rn. Therefore, now we consider such a function and the point x tilde in the domain. Moreover, we also need to fix a direction now and let's call this v. So this is a vector in Rn that describes the direction here. Hence, the length of the vector should not be important, just the direction is what we need. Therefore, one often chooses a unit vector, a vector with length 1 for v. And by having that, we can look at such a difference quotient again. However, now instead of changing just one component here, we have to change all components in the direction of v. More concretely, here in the first part, we would change x tilde by a small amount by h and then we subtract f at the point x tilde again. And then as before, we would divide by h again. However, now the question should be, what does it mean to change x tilde in the direction of v? Indeed, this is not so complicated when you think of the vector addition. This means to the vector x tilde, we just add the vector h times v. Hence you see, we scale the vector v by the factor h. This means when we make h smaller and smaller, we go to x tilde on this line. And there you see, this is exactly what we want. In other words, here in the definition, we need x tilde plus h times v. And please note, this plus here is the vector addition in Rn. 
Okay, so the last thing we have to do now is to look if this limit, the limit h to 0, actually exists. And if it does, we have our directional derivative. More precisely, we would say it's the directional derivative of the function f along the vector v at the point x tilde. At this point, you might already guess that there are a lot of different notations different people use to denote this limit here. Indeed, it's the same problem we have already discussed with the partial derivatives. So for example, some people use this curve d with index v. On the other hand, also a capital D is used in the same sense. Moreover, maybe as a new notation, you also see the Nabla symbol with index v to denote the directional derivative along v. Therefore, be careful here, you shouldn't confuse this with the gradient. Please note, the gradient would be a vector and denoted like this. However, the notation of the gradient is also used to denote the directional derivative, namely in this sense here. So you write vector v dot vector gradient. Of course, this thing here should be a short notation for an inner product, and why this makes sense, we discuss in a minute. Okay, now the takeaway from this is simply, please be careful when you read different books, because the notations could differ. Now, calculating this limit here could be complicated depending how your vector v looks like. Therefore, it's good to know that the whole thing gets easier when we have a totally differentiable function f. And this is now something we can formulate with a proposition. So let's take a function f defined on Rn, which is totally differentiable at the point x tilde. And in addition, we take a direction again, so a unit vector v. Then, of course, we expect that this limit from above exists. And indeed, we can simply rewrite this as an ordinary one-dimensional derivative. There, we can just consider this one-dimensional function, where our variable is t, which represents the h here above. Now for this function, we can simply ask, what is the ordinary derivative with respect to t? And there, we use the notation d dt. And now you should see, by the definition of the differential quotient, this is exactly the left-hand side when we evaluate the derivative here on the right-hand side at t is equal to 0. And this can simply be denoted with a line where we put t is equal to 0 on. So this is a useful definition for the derivative of this function here at the point 0. And with this, we now have a much shorter formulation for the limit on the left-hand side here. However, we can make that even shorter when we say that this inner part here is a new function gamma. So it's like a curve function from the last videos defined from r into rn. Of course, here we know the image of gamma is just a line in the domain, but the important thing is it's a differentiable function. This implies that we can rewrite this as a composition and use the chain rule. Please recall, this will be our beautiful multidimensional chain rule. Hence, we have the multiplication of two Jacobian matrices. So first, we have the Jacobian matrix of f at the point gamma t times the Jacobian matrix of gamma at the point t. And then we would evaluate it at the point 0, which means we can substitute this here immediately. Now what we can also immediately substitute is the Jacobian matrix of gamma, which is simply the derivative of gamma at the point 0. However, there we see this is just a constant vector v. So this holds no matter which point t we put into the derivative of gamma. Moreover, gamma at the point 0 is simply x tilde. So in summary, what we get is that the directional derivative along v is simply the Jacobian matrix of f at the point x tilde times v. Or if you want to write it with the gradient, it's the inner product of the gradient of f at the point x tilde with v. Okay, so this formula here now explains the strange notation we have seen for the directional derivative above. Moreover, it also explains why the gradient is such an important concept in multivariable calculus. Indeed, this expression here gives us more geometric interpretation for the gradient. However, this is now a topic for the next video. So surely we should meet there and have a nice day. Bye.